Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Sebastian, for the introduction. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers also for the opportunity to speak in such a nice conference, in such a nice institute and city. OK? So as uh, Sebastian said, I'm going to talk a little bit about geodesic flows on surfaces of non-positive curvature that are Bernoulli. So let us put the setup of the talk. Well, it's actually here, but let me write it properly. So you have sorry, M2. It is a C infinity compact boundaryless surface. We assume that M is not the torus. Um, we also assume that the sectional curvature, or here the Gaussian curvature because it's dimension two, is non-positive, okay? Well, given, given this and given this, I have a, a, Riemannian, a Riemannian manifold, so I can consider the geodesic flow. It was already actually defined in Keith Burns' talk. So let me consider phi. Where does the geodesic flow live? It lives in the tangent bundle. We can restrict it to the unit tangent bundle. So we have a flow on the unit tangent bundle. It flows along the geodesics at unit speed, and it sends one vector to the respective vector. OK. And for the purpose of this talk, I'm also going to consider a measure, which is going to be an invariant measure for the flow. And let us restrict ourselves to two cases of the measure. So either phi is Liouville or phi is a measure of maximal entropy, just like in the case of uh, Jerome Bouzy's talk yesterday. So measure of maximal entropy. OK. So we have a system, and we can ask many questions about the system, whether it is ergodic, whether it, it has stronger mixing properties. So it, is, it was actually mentioned also yesterday a conjecture that people still don't know whether the measure mu being equal to Liouville, whether this thing is ergodic. So this is an open question, whether mu is ergodic. But it is known that the measure of maximal entropy is unique, hence ergodic. This was proved by Knieper. He actually proved in the setting of rank one manifolds which, which uh, covers this case. So we know that this guy is ergodic. And the goal of my talk is to go beyond these things. So we know that this guy is ergodic, OK. And provided also that this guy is ergodic, I'm going to convince you, like I'll try to convince you, that in both cases, you can go beyond ergodicity and prove that actually the measure is Bernoulli or the system given by this triple is Bernoulli. So this is the goal of the talk. It's to go from ergodicity to Bernoulli for this, these two cases, OK? So I have to tell you first what is a Bernoulli flow. So let us stop for a little bit and uh, remember a few definitions of ergodic theory for flows. And I'm going from the easiest uh, property to the most complicated one, which is Bernoulli. So I think we are all comfortable with the definition of an ergodic system. So actually, let me fix here x, the space A, the sigma algebra, phi t, 
is the flow, and mu is an invariant measure for this flow. So I want to remind you what it means to be ergodic, what it means to be weak mixing, what it means to be mixing, and going further, what it means to be a K flow, and finally, what it means to be a Bernoulli flow. Okay, so ergodicity, ergodicity is the same thing. If you have an invariant measure, then this measure is constant. I'm not going to write the almost everywhere statements, okay? So the idea is that if you have something invariant, this something has to be trivial. It is indecomposable in the measure theoretical sense. Weak mixing is something that is stronger, so I'm going to put this inclusion here. And it says that if you have an eigenfunction, and in this case, because it is a flow, it has to be written, an eigenfunction has to be written like this, okay? They, the application of the function after the iteration of the flow, it's the function times this thing here, this correcting number here. Lambda is going to be the eigenvalue. So again, this, the system is going to be weak mixing if a function that satisfies this is constant. All right? <coughs> mixing is the same thing also. So if you get two sets, measurable sets, then the measure of this intersection is going to converge as the time goes to infinity to the product of the measures. All right? So now let us go to the K flow into the Bernoulli flow. So what is a K flow? I can give you three definitions of the K flow which were proved to be uh, equivalent. The first definition is something in terms of mixing. So it's, I won't write properly what it is, but it, it is a sort of uniform mixing. So because it's uniform, everything that's K is also mixing. And well, we can check also that everything that's mixing is weak mixing, okay? So this is a much stronger condition that we impose on the flow. I can define in this term, so, or I can define in two other terms. The other, the other one is actually why the number, the letter K comes from, is that the flow satisfies Komogorov's zero one law. And what does this mean? This means that if this letter here that I don't remember the name, is a finite partition, then the tail of this partition is trivial. Okay? It, it is to say that tail measurable events are trivial, and this is exactly what Komogorov's law, zero one law, is about. And finally, and it, it will be the one that will be more useful for us. It's uh, the definition of a K-flow in terms of completely positive entropy. And what does that, does that mean? Well, every system has a bigger subsystem which has zero entropy, and this, this is called the Pinsker factor or the Pinsker algebra. In the case of a flow, <coughs> the Pinsker factor of the flow is defined as the Pinsker factor of an automorphism, and the automorphism can be taken can be taken to be any time of the flow, as long as it's not zero. So you can fix the time one and define the Pinsker factor of the flow as the Pinsker factor of the time one map, okay? And saying that this flow is Komogorov is saying that this thing here is trivial. And if I told you that this is, is, the, lar this is the largest factor of the, of the flow, of the automorphism, that has zero entropy, well, this thing here is equivalent to saying that every non-trivial factor of my flow has positive entropy. And this is the notion of completely positive entropy. Okay? All right, so finally we'll get to 
the definition of a Bernoulli flow. And I guess that we all know what a Bernoulli automorphism is. A Bernoulli automorphism is just the IID iterations of random variables, right? You have a finite alphabet, and you consider the measure on the sequence given by this finite alphabet, and this measure you consider it to be a Bernoulli measure, so it's the product of the same probability vector. And this is what is called a Bernoulli automorphism. And what is, what is a Bernoulli flow? It is a flow such that for every non-trivial time, this automorphism is a Bernoulli automorphism. So that flow is going to be Bernoulli if phi t is a Bernoulli automorphism for every non-trivial t, okay? And it is a theorem that to check this, it is only necessary to check this property for one time. So usually people state this, that a flow is a Bernoulli if the time one map of the flow is a Bernoulli automorphism. Okay, so now you know what a Bernoulli automorphism is, <clears throat> but the question is whether they exist or not. So I will give you an example of a Bernoulli automorphism now to tell you that they really exist. So an example, not of a Bernoulli automorphism, an example of a Bernoulli automorphism we all know, of a Bernoulli flow. This is called the Totoki flow. And what is the Totoki flow? It is a suspension flow. If you remember Federico's talk uh, last week, last week, yeah, he defined what a suspension flow is. And what is a suspension flow? Well, suspension flow, you need two data to, to, to construct a suspension flow. You need an automorphism, so you need a space and a map, and you need a roof function. In this case of the Tataki flow, what is the automorphism? The automorphism is the two-sided shift. And the roof function is a function that is constant on the trivial cylinders here, on the cylinder that has the zero of position zero and the zero of position one. So let me write the sigma, although it's totally disconnected, but I write it in this, just like an interval. And I'm going to consider the partition. The left one is the cylinder that on the zero of position has zero, and the right one on the zero of position has one. So I'm going to tell you what, what is the roof function now. Well, the roof function is constant here and it's constant here. Here, I can make it be equal to one, and here, I make it be equal to alpha, where alpha is an irrational number. So, constant one on zero, zero, oh, not zero, alpha on one. And the main property is that this alpha is different from zero. Oh, it's not rational. So I have my basis and I have my roof function. And what is the flow that I consider? Well, I just flow at unit speed on this space. When I hit the top, when I hit the graph of the function, I come back to the section according to my map on the basis. So I, for example, if my sequence starts with 0, 1, and I start, I'm going to start here, I'm going to flow time 1 here until I come here and I keep doing this, OK? So this is the Totoki flow. Totoki, Totoki showed that this flow has the K property. So Totoki. Or oh, is a K flow. 
And Onstein showed that it actually is <coughs> Bernoulli flow. So yes, they do exist. But the construction is totally probabilistic. So in the basis, you have a Markov chain, and you consider the suspension. So now I'm going to, to, to try to convince you that actually these Bernoulli flows, they are more, they appear in many other places, and some of them were actually not expected during the 70s. So let me mention a little bit of the literature A few cases in which people proved that the flow is a Bernoulli flow. And what is nice is that in all these cases, the flow is a deterministic one. So they started with a deterministic system, and they proved that it is as random as you can expect. Okay? So the first, uh, I don't know if it was the first, but the first I want to mention here was Anozov and Sinai. And they proved that if you have a, Riemannian manifold, well, if you are in the case of an Ozov, an Ozov flow, so you have negative sectional curvature, and you consider the Liouville measure, then the flow is K. All right? I might come back to this. The main, the main tool that they used for proving this was rochlin sinai theory of measurable partitions. But, uh, well, that's what I want to say right now. <clears throat> so the second result I want to mention is by Onstein and Weiss. in which they develop a condition that is checkable to see if a flow is Bernoulli or not. And they apply this to the situation of uh, geodesic flows on surfaces of constant negative curvature. So uh, phi geodesic flow on surface with curvature constant n equals to minus 1, and the measure being the Liouville, the Lebesgue measure. So they proved that in this case, the flow is a Bernoulli flow. So this is a totally deterministic system, but after a change of coordinates, it becomes the most random as you can expect. Okay. All right, so this is a main result because it introduced this notion of very weak Bernoulli partitions, and it's a notion that is checkable, and if you prove that there is a sequence of very weak Bernoulli partitions that generate your sigma algebra, then your flow is going to be Bernoulli. So this uh, uh, result was later extended by Ratner, exactly by checking the very weak Bernoulli partitions Bernoulli condition, and she showed that if you have an anozo flow, <clears throat> and if you have a measure which is good in some sense, in this case it has a Gibbs property, but it has also some other regularity properties that I don't want to mention right now. Then what she proved? She proved that if the flow is a K flow, then it actually is Bernoulli. So in this setting, there is no space for a flow being K and not being Bernoulli. Okay? This regularity implies that it actually has to be Bernoulli. All right. So I want to, to, to say few sentences on the approach of Ratner for proving this. So 
So Radner implemented, as far as I understand, Sinai's program. And Sinai uh, was interested in analyzing measures, relevant measures for physical systems. And how did, he, that, how did he do that? He realized that if you have a symbolic description of your system, things become easier to do it. So what Radner did was exactly that. So if you start with a flow or with a system, so Radner's approach, let me write here. was you start with your system and you apply a coding procedure to, to instead of analyzing your system, you analyze a symbolic system. system. So you have a symbolic model, and I'll be more precise in a few minutes what it means to have a symbolic model. But things become easier to analyze in the symbolic model. So at this level here, she implemented these properties plus onstein weiss idea. So mu being a good measure. And she used Onstein and Weiss. Actually, I'm going to write here Onstein's theory because that's how it's known nowadays. And she was able to get the Bernoulli property, to analyze the Bernoulli property. So why am I mentioning this? Because I'm going to write a result right now, or in a few minutes. And the approach for proving this result is exactly as Ratner's approach. So I'm going to give a setup on which we are able to say many things about the system. It's going to be Bernoulli, or basically a Bernoulli times a rotation. And the way we are going to prove this is exactly as this. You start with your system, and you get a symbolic model for the system. And after that, you use, in, this, in our case, we are going to, instead of having a measure like that, we are going to have a, an equilibrium measure. So we are going to use thermodynamical formalism plus this very weak Bernoulli condition to get the Bernoulli property. OK? So what is the result? <coughs> so um, we prove a theorem in this following the same approach of Ratner. And what is our setup? So our setup, unfortunately at the moment we are not able to deal with all the dimensions. So you have a three-dimensional C infinity closed, compact, without boundary manifold. You have a flow. And I have two assumptions on, the, on this flow. Uh, the first assumption is that it doesn't have fixed points, so without fixed points. And the first assumption is a regularity one. It is the assumption that the vector field that generates this flow is at least of the order C1 plus beta. If x is the vector field of phi, and I assume that this is of class C1 plus beta. In terms of the vector field, saying that the phi doesn't have uh, fixed points, the same as saying that the vector field does not vanish anywhere. OK? OK, so you are in the situation. Well, we have a dynamics. We need a measure. So we're going to have mu. It's going to be an equilibrium measure in the sense of Jerome Bouzy's talk yesterday. 
So it's an equilibrium measure of a holder potential. I'm going to assume it is ergodic. And I'm going to assume it has positive metric entropy. Okay? So this doesn't seem similar to what has been done before about the nozzle flows. But note, as long as I am assuming that the positive metric entropy is positive, well, by who else inequality? Since we are in low dimension, this means that I have, well, I have a flow. So I always have a, 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 a Lyapunov exponent that is equal to zero. It's the flow direction. Having positive entropy tells me that I have a positive Lyapunov exponent as well. If I do the same thing for the inverse flow, well, the inverse flow also has to have a positive Lyapunov exponent. This means that the flow actually has one Lyapunov exponent which is zero, another one which is positive, and another one which is negative. So I am exactly in the situation of non-uniformly, non-uniform hyperbolicity. And now I'm happy because if I have non-uniform hyperbolicity, I can use Passing's theory. Okay, so we are going from something that's uniformly hyperbolic to something that's non-uniformly hyperbolic. All right, so this is the setup of the theorem. And what is the theorem? The theorem is a joint work with Le Drapier, Francois Le Drapier and Omri Sarig. is that in this situation, my triple here, m phi mu, is either a Bernoulli flow or it is the product of a Bernoulli flow with a rotational flow. Okay, there is a second part of the theorem that if in addition we impose an extra condition on our flow and the condition is that the flow is a wrap flow, if in addition phi is a wrap flow, I don't want to define what the wrap flow is right now. If I have time towards the end of the talk, I will. So in the case of the rep flow, you should think of the rep flow as the most non-integral situation. So a contact structure, giving a contact structure is just like giving a, a, a planes, in this case you, have, you are two dimensions, so you give planes tangent to the, to the space that are non-integral, so you don't have an integral foliation of these planes. And a rep flow is something that's associated to this contact structure. So in the case that you have the rip flow, you cannot have the situation of Bernoulli times rotation. You have to be Bernoulli. So if in addition phi is a rep flow, then only the first case happens is Bernoulli. <coughs> okay? And the geodesic flow is an example of a rep flow. So in our case, we don't have Bernoulli times rotation. We have to have Bernoulli. All right, so now let me mention to you this thing that I just erased. How do you use this same sketch, the same scheme of Ratner to prove this theorem? So the first part, as, we, as I wrote here, is that you have to have a symbolic coding 
of your system. So remember that the system that I'm dealing with is this triple here. I have this three-dimensional uh, manifold. I have a flow without fixed points, and I have a measure with positive entropy. So this first part here was made in a joint work with Omris Arig. Is that if m phi mu is as above, then there is a symbolic model. And in this case, then there is a what we call topological Markov flow. And I'll define what it is. And a map, which is actually holder. Well, I need some notation here. Topological Markov flow is going to be sigma r, sigma r. I will define this right after I write the theorem. And there is a map pi r from sigma r to the manifold, such that it commutes the diagram. So pi r composed with sigma r is equal to phi composed with pi r. And you should think of the diagram here exactly as Pablo Carrasco said last week. So what is the goal of uh, symbolic dynamics? Is to obtain some extension that intertwines the dynamics, but the extension itself is not much more complex than this thing here. So in the sense of not being much more complex, I mean that it, it is basically finite to one. So pi, pi r is finite to one in a set of full mu measure. OK? So why is it good to have an extension which is finite to one? Well, we all know that whenever we have a measure here, we can project the measure here. But when we have a measure here, it is more complicated to lift the measure. Well, in some situations, you can lift the measure. But the measure that you lift is going to be much more complicated. If you have a finite to one extension, you are always able to lift your measure in a way that the, the metric entropy of the lifted measure is the same as the metric entropy below. Why is that? You have this abramov rochlin formula, which tells you that the entropy on the top is the entropy below plus the average of the entropy on the fibers. If the fibers are finite, finite or countable, they carry no entropy. So the entropies are the same. All right? So this is one of the main goals of constructing these finite to one extensions of your dynamics, because you can analyze ergodic theoretical properties not here, but here. You can lift measures. I just want to mention two corollaries of this theorem. Uh, one of them is, again, in the setup of Jerome Bouzy's talk yesterday. So one of the corollary that we get, we don't get finiteness still, but we get countability of the measures of maximal entropy. So there are, at most, countably many measures of maximal entropy. And the second corollary is in the terms of counting the number of closed orbits. So the symbolic model is much easier to analyze closed orbits. And by doing that, we are able to prove that the number of closed orbits of length of period at most t grows at least as a constant times e to the t <coughs> times the topological entropy divided by t. Okay, I have a measure that's positive, so the topological entropy is also, by the variational principle, positive. So this is a positive number. So it grows roughly as an exponential after you divide by this t here. All right. And we cannot expect much more in this setup because our conditions are very weak. I mean, you could have uncountably many uh, closed orbits, and this would, well, this tells you that you cannot expect to have an upper bound for this thing here. 
All right. So this is the symbolic part. And what does it allow us to do? It allows us to consider this measure mu here on M and lift it in a way that the, the entropy is preserved to a measure nu on sigma r. But what is sigma r? I still didn't define what sigma r is to you. So before writing this, let me tell you what is sigma r and sigma r. OK. So let us say that you have a graph, oriented graph, with countably many states, countably many ve vertices. You can consider the path on this graph, and this gives you a symbolic space, which I'm going to call sigma. So paths, two-sided paths on G. So what is the graph that defines the two, side, the, the two shift? Well, you have 0, 1, and you have all possible transitions allowed. You can consider a more complicated graph with countably many vertices and do the same thing here, paths on G. And there is a dynamic associated to this, which is the left shift. And this is a topological Markov shift. What is a topological Markov flow? Well, it's just like we define on Totoki's flow. You need a roof function. So you need a function from the basis to the positive reals. So you can consider the suspension space and the suspension flow. Sigma r, the suspension space. What is that? All the points below the graph of r with the identification that x, r of x, is the same of sigma of x, 0. And sigma r here is the suspension flow. You flow at unit speed vertically upwards in this space here. When you hit the top, you consider the identification and you come down. So this is our model. It's a suspension. But the condition that we have to put is that instead of having finitely many states on our symbolic dynamics, we have countably many. OK? <clears throat> but this is not bad. This is actually good. So what I want to do right now, well, I want to tell you more or less the scheme of the proof of the theorem. So we start with a measure on M. And because we have a finite one extension, we can lift this measure to the space sigma r. And it is easy to check, actually, because the entropies are preserved, that if this guy is an equilibrium measure, this guy is also going to be an equilibrium measure. OK? So we are with an equilibrium measure with respect to the flow. But we can consider the flux measure. So every measure here is associated to a measure on the Yes, I'm, I'm proving the theorem that I just erased here, that I want to get Bernoulli or Bernoulli times rotation. So this is the first part of the proof. You get the symbolic coding. Now you need to do the Onstein's theory and thermodynamic formalism analysis to be able to prove Bernoulli or Bernoulli times rotation. OK? In the end, we are going to prove that this thing is Bernoulli. And two Bernoulli flows, they are the same. So our flow is going to be the same as Totoki after a change of base. OK? OK. My time is almost done, right? I have five minutes? Three. Four minutes, Four minutes. OK. So you get this measure, which is, lives in the suspension space. And you can project it down to the flux measure here on the basis. So you are with a measure on your topological Markov shift. This guy is an equilibrium measure. I just told you that this guy is an equilibrium measure as well. There is a limb of Perry and Polycott that shows that if you have an equilibrium measure in a suspension space and you project, what you project is still going to be an equilibrium measure for the basis with respect to another potential function. 
But the conclusion is that we have a topological Markov shift and we have an equilibrium measure on the basis. So Perry and Pavlikot. tell us that this guy here is equilibrium measure. And what is good is that Buzi and Sarig analyzed equilibrium measures for topological Markov shift to accountably many states. So we have two properties of this measure is that it has local product structure. and the Gibbs property, some Gibbs property. So this is the thermodynamical formalism part that I need. And this allows me to do the following sketch of proof. We can see our suspension flow. I'm going to draw it like this now. As a partially hyperbolic system. And the tool that we are going to use to start to analyze the ergodic properties of this flow is something called the Olonomy group. It has been used by Brin, by Pessin, and by many auto other authors in the literature. What does it do? Let us fix a point here, and let us consider all SU paths closed centered at this point with respect to the basis. You can lift this SU path with respect to the basis to a SU path with respect to the flow. With what happens when you lift? Well, you do this, you do this, you do this, and you do this, and you come back to something here. Not necessarily X again, but, some, but X plus some displacement vertically. Let me call this vertical displacement to be the P of my curve gamma that I start with. And I can look at all of these P of gammas here. So the Olonomy group is the closure of all of these P of gammas, where gamma is a closed SU path at X. Why do I do this? Because I have to, un to understand the ergodic properties in the flow direction. And how do I do? I do by means of the hyperbolicity in the basis. So for example, if I have something that is a constant suspension, these guys here, they are always going to be multiples of the same number. And this is what we analyze. Analyzing this G here, how do we analyze this G? It is easy to see that G is an additive subgroup of R, and it is closed. What are the closed additive subgroups of R? They are either 0 or discrete, non-trivial, or they are the whole of R. If it's 0, we can apply katok kononenko's construction for Lifshitz theory, Kononenko, to conclude that actually the roof function has to be a co-boundary. But roof functions cannot be co-boundaries, right? They have to be positive everywhere. So how can, how can it be a co-boundary? So this does not happen. If G is discrete non-trivial, again applying katok Kononenko's construction, we conclude that R is cohomologous to something taking values on this closed subgroup. So in this case, our flow is almost a constant suspension. So let me conclude here. So our flow is something that the roof function is a constant multiple, is a multiple of some constant number. And that is a trick of Bowen that allows us to conclude that actually suspensions like this are constant suspensions. So what do you do? You just change your section by completing this thing here. 
And if you see your flow with respect to this section, well, how long does it take for it starting in the section and go back to the section? It takes a constant time. So this thing here implies that by this trick of Bowen, that this thing is a constant suspension, which is almost Bernoulli times rotation. So if you apply, again, Ornstein's theory, we obtain that in this case, what we get is Bernoulli times rotation. So we are already in one of the cases of our theorem. We just have to analyze what happens when G equals R. When G equals R, mean, what that means is, is that you can go in the flow direction as much as you want by doing SU paths. There is the Rochlin Sinai theory, and that's when I say it again, of measurable partitions that says that in this case, you can actually prove the K property. So having the saturation in the flow direction tells you that the flow is a K flow. So we only need to analyze what happens when it's K. Remember Ratner's theorem that she allowed us to go from K to Bernoulli. So we apply her ideas. In this case, are these properties of Buzi and Sarig, so thermodynamical formalism, plus the notion of very weak Bernoulli partitions, so I'm going to put Onstein here, to conclude that if the flow is K, then the flow is Bernoulli. So this is a rough scheme of the proof that goes uh, with, the, with the head of this holonomy group. This holonomy group allows us to get three very rigid situations in which starting from them we can conclude that this case does not happen. In the second case, what we get is Bernoulli times rotation. In the third case, what we get is a Bernoulli, okay? And I think I'm going to stop now. Thank you.